Hey guys, it's Abdullah and I finally managed to get my hands on the Nokia 3.4. So in this video, I'm gonna be unboxing this device as well as comparing it when it comes to dimensions and design against some of the other popular mid-range Nokia devices such as the Nokia 5.3 and the Nokia 7.2. So let's get straight into it. So let's take a look at the outside of the box. As you can see, it looks very similar to the box found on the Nokia 5.3. Um, you will get it minus this ugly Axiom logo here. And it has the phone in blue on the front with the name on the left. As for the rest of the box on the back, you pretty much just have all the basic specs. So it's the Snapdragon 460 uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon processor, a 6.39 inch HD plus display with hole in display and all the camera uh, options and specs like 13 megapixel main camera with a 2 megapixel depth sensor, a 5 megapixel ultra wide camera and an 8 megapixel front camera. Portrait mode, they're very proud of night mode on this sort of price range. And then you have the two day battery life with 4000 milliamp battery. So let's take a look uh, inside to see the contents of the box. So you open it up and immediately the phone is facing you. And I've already opened it before, but I tried to wrap it again. So all these things that you see here, you won't find, but it's wrapped and it has this OK Google wrapper on it to let you know that, you know, the Google Assistant button is to the left. As for the rest of the box, you get a five watt charger, which isn't very fast. There is a USB-C port which is a good plus for this sort of device and for this sort of price range. So that's a good thing. My unit also has headphones. So in-ear headphones and they're well, as cheap as they come. Of course, you have the phone here. I have the quite cool Dusk version here, which is purplish. I'm gonna open that very soon. All the catalogs in Arabic here and in English for this region. You also get a clear case in this version, Middle Eastern version of the phone. And I think the Indian market will probably also get the same thing. So that's quite nice. So let's unwrap the phone here. And then you have this other wrapper here on the front, pretty much a screen protector that just mentions all the basic specs, the same as what's in the box. I like how they have Android 11 ready, but this phone actually ships with Android 10. Hey, good to know. This is always super satisfying. Okay, so first impressions of the hardware, honestly, I like it quite a lot. It feels quite light in the hand, but at the same time, it's solid. So it's not too light, not too heavy. And I like how, you know, this 6.39 inch display feels quite usable with one hand. It feels quite compact. I really like that. The material on the edges here, this is probably plastic but it's quite stiff, it's quite hard. It resembles metal when it comes to feel, but it won't get cold and it doesn't have any antenna lines, so it's definitely not metal. The back is also made out of plastic and it has this slight texture on it, which I think is gonna help a little bit when it comes to, you know, the phone not being super slippery. I really like this color and I like the design element around the camera. So you have this bump that, you know, starts with the plastic and then goes all the way up. I like that better than having that ring on a lot of phones. And you can only do that when you have like a plastic back because, you know, metal is gonna be a lot more expensive to do such a move. And then you have the color also in the middle of the camera bump here, the same color as the rest of the phone. The back of the phone has three cameras on this one. So you have the 13 megapixel main camera, five megapixel ultra wide camera, and you have a two megapixel depth camera with LED flash. And you also have the fingerprint uh, scanner on the back here, which 
you know, from my experience, seems to be okay. Not the fastest in the world, but you know, it's quite decent. So I'll show you here. Here you go. You know, it takes about half a second to turn on. So it's nice to have, you know, fairly reliable and fairly decent when it comes to speed. Let's talk about the rest of the hardware. So you have a headphone jack at the top, very nice feature that seems to be only popular in low end devices these days. You also have the USB-C, thank God you have one speaker here and it's on the right side. You have the volume rockers on the right side of the device and you have the power button on the right as well, which is a classic Nokia move. And then on the left hand side, you have the Google assistant button, which I don't think you can remap. And then you have the SIM slot with the SD card. Uh, slot as well. So this phone comes with 64 gigabytes of internal storage and this unit here in particular has four gigabytes of built-in RAM uh, as well. And the nice thing about it is that in the SIM slot you can put two SIM cards as well as an SD slot to expand your storage as opposed to some phones where it's one SIM slot and then a hybrid slot. So that's quite a nice thing to have. But yeah, I really like the hardware design of this phone. I think it looks really good. I think the color is very, very nice. I don't know if I'd go for this personally or I'd go with the blue. I think I'd probably go with the blue, but nevertheless a very nice looking color. As for the display, so it's a 6.39 inch display as I mentioned before and it's an HD plus uh, resolution. The screen looks decent. I don't know if it's a bit better than the 5.3, it seems quite similar, maybe slightly more saturated, which I prefer, but it looks quite good to my eyes and yeah it doesn't have the highest uh, pixel count and you know if you put your face close enough, you'll definitely be able to see the pixels. But for this sort of device, it does the job perfectly. And, you know, I'm glad that it seems like it's a good quality uh, panel. On the front, you also have the eight megapixel selfie camera. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but you know, the cameras here are almost identical to the Nokia 5.3 minus the two megapixel macro cam, which doesn't exist on this phone. And I don't really miss it at all. So that seems quite nice. Let's do a quick test here to see if you know it's any good and we're going to use the trusty Corvette for this test so we'll just take a quick picture here okay so taking pictures is decently fast not the fastest in the world but you know it does the job opening the pictures is also fairly fast and looking at the quality uh, well it's questionable <laughs> i would say but then again i don't have very high expectations from this sort of device considering you know it's it cost me about 150 us dollars here in the middle east and it's going to cost you about 150 euros in most other places so you know the camera it does it's supposed to do the job and it does so as you saw here switching between the cameras does take its time and then the wide angle camera, the five megapixel camera is, I don't expect it to be on the same quality as the main camera, but yeah, it's okay. But you can see a lot of the lost details here on the edges, which is a problem that the 5.3 also suffered from. I'm gonna compare between this and the 5.3 to see which camera is actually better. I do expect the 5.3 to just have a bit better software optimization, but we'll find out in the comparison to come. The big thing about the camera on this device is it comes with night mode, which is quite nice to have for this sort of price range. As for the rest of the settings, I would say they're pretty standard. There's nothing super exciting, you know, minus the night mode. Video resolution, it tops up at 1080p. So let's just take a look at, you know, the user experience just for a second to see if the phone is any quick opening. So the phone is still setting up, so it's quite hard to judge how quick it will do when it comes to trying to open things up. I don't expect it to be lightning fast, but I think for day-to-day -day tasks, it should be okay. Or I'm hoping it's gonna be okay. We're gonna find that out soon. So as you guys know, this phone comes with Android 10 out of the box as a part of the Android One program, which means it's as stock as it gets when it comes to Android and the only additions by uh, Nokia Mobile are, you know, the camera app and some other features. I believe it has double tap to wake up. Yep, and it does have that. 
yeah, it's supposed to get two years of updates and three years of security updates. If that's your sort of thing, you will like the Nokia 3.4 when it comes to the software. So how does the hardware compare against the Nokia 5.3, which is its bigger sibling? As you can see, when it comes to size, the 3.4 is slightly shorter. And for some reason, you know, it also feels a bit nicer to hold, uh, a bit more comfortable. And I think it has to do with the width of the phone from the front and the slightly smaller display. So it feels a bit more narrow, which makes it feel a bit better, you know, a bit easier, I would say, to hold. Uh, in terms of hardware quality, they're quite similar, quite comparable, just have that soft matte finish on the 5.3 with the textured finish on the uh, on the 3.4 wouldn't say one is better than the other in terms of size against the 7.2 it's a bit more comparable in size uh, do keep in mind look at this you know they're almost identical do keep in mind that the 3.4 feels thinner because the rails are thinner and i think it's slightly thinner as well um, the edge on the 7.2 is definitely thicker and you know the 7.2 has this very nice glass-like finish on, on the back which is glossy and you know gets a lot of fingerprints but it has very cool color uh, the 3.4 doesn't have that but at the same time as i said you know it actually feels nicer to hold in the hand or let's say easier to hold in the hand because it's narrower so ergonomics wise i really like what they've done with the 3.4 and they've also managed to fit a slightly bigger screen on the front 6.39 inch uh, display as opposed to the 6.3 inch display on this in the same exact dimensions so that's you know the natural evolution of things with a newer design so this was my first impression uh, of the device i think the hardware looks pretty solid i like the design and like the color the camera i don't have very high expectations of it but we're gonna test out to see how good it is and you know the specs seem quite okay the snapdragon 460 is decent for this sort of device i don't expect it to be very fast but I think it's going to be an okay phone for day-to-day -day tasks, assuming, you know, speed isn't your number one priority. Uh, otherwise, there are, I think, better options out there, including maybe the more expensive 5.3. So that's pretty much what I think so far from this early impression unboxing of this device. So do you guys have any questions about the Nokia 3.4? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you want me to focus on something specific in the review, I'm more than happy to read all your comments and answer all your questions. That's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.